Hello my fellow lifeforms and welcome back. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos on how to create the platonic solids, all these shapes right here that you can see. This is an awesome fun exercise to do to just have an awesome model not only on your desk but also get familiar with these shapes and how they relate to one another and the patterns used to create them using a compass and a square. So in this video we're going to be tackling the cube. It is the uh, first and I would call the simplest, one of the simplest besides the tetrahedron of these shapes and so let's get right on into it. So the tools you're going to need are a piece of paper, your compass, and a square. This is my compass from Mr. Penn. Absolutely love this guy. I'm going to be using this aluminum triangle. This is my uh, 90, 60, 30 triangle from Art from Artists Loft. Absolutely love these guys. You can get them at your local local craft store, or you can find them online by searching for uh, aluminum or metal drawing triangle. Great investment. You're going to need a way of cutting your page or paper. I can, you can use a pair of scissors, or I'm actually going to be using my X-Acto knife. And you're going to need a way of gluing the flaps together. So I'm going to be using this hot glue gun right here, but you can use stick glue or Elmer's glue or whatever you have available to you. But that's just what we're going to be using for that. All right, so let's get right on into this. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a line through the center of our page. Just kind of eyeball it. We're going to go all the way across that right there, and we're going to create a circle, not here in the center, but a little bit off to the left, right here. Create the first circle we are going to have. Now we are going to create a square inside of that circle, and to do that, I'm going to open my compass to the diameter of this circle, which is about right there. And I'm going to place my uh, needle right here at the edge of the circle where it meets that line. I'm going to create a mark up here and down here, like so. And then put my needle at the other side of the circle and do the same thing. Creating a mark up at the top and down here at the bottom, like so. Now I can then put my pencil or mechanical pencil where those two lines intersect and then line my ruler up to the upper mark up there and then I can draw my line through my circle creating four divisions of my circle. Now we are going to create four marks on the outside of this circle so we're going to take the original measurement program that back into my compass like so then I'm going to place my needle out here on the edge of the circle and then create a mark up here like that and then down here like so. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. Creating a mark out here and up here. Now I'm going to put the needle up at the top where it meets that vertical line and create my mark out here and then over here. I'm going to do that at the bottom as well. Now you can see those are our four marks, and now I will connect them by putting my mechanical pencil here, bringing my ruler to it, and then lining it up at this top mark here, which should also go right through the center of my circle. And I'm just gonna draw a line as the diameter of that circle. I'm not gonna go all the way through. And then just do the same thing in the opposite direction. Like so, very good. So now you can see where those lines touch my circle. I'm gonna now connect them to create the square, the first square of our cube. So this should be what you have. Just like that. Now I'm going to extend those lines outward because we're going to need more of this to replicate the rest of the cube. So I'm just going to extend those lines outward like so. And then extend these lines out like so. 
So now you can start to see this cross pattern that's going to be forming here. So now that we have our initial square, we need to replicate it five more times. So two to the right, one up above and below, and then one to the left. And how we're going to do that is we're going to program the length of one of the sides of the square to our compass, like so. You can see that. And now I'm going to transfer this mark up here and then over here like so. Now I'm going to put my needle at each corner of the square and do that on all of the extending lines from our initial square outward. Like so. Now we're going to need to do one more square out to this side, so I'm just going to place my needle where those two lines are that intersect our main lines and then create an additional marks, two additional marks out here like that. So now I can connect these together like so. And there you can begin to see the rest of the squares that will all come together to create the cube. So the last thing we need to do before we start to cut them is to create the flaps we're going to use to glue them together. And this is a super convenient way of doing this and it's really cool actually. So we need to find the centers of each of these squares besides this one. We, can, we already have the center of that one and we don't even need to do anything to that one. But anyway, we need to find the center of these two. So to do that I'm going to place my pencil down here at this bottom corner and then connect it to this top corner over here which will also intersect through the corner of our first square right there, like so. Draw my line. That gives us the center of those two squares, and we'll do the same thing to these two as well. Very good. And then this last one, we just got to connect the corners across and there's the center of that one. So now that we have the center, I'm going to take the this, the length of the center to the corner of the square and program that into my compass. And then just draw circles around each square. Just like so. Oops. Super easy to slide. Okay, and one more. And this is the pattern you should now have on your page, is this kind of bubbly looking cross. And this is also a really important shape throughout sacred geometry as well. A lot of cathedrals have this exact format and layout, which is super cool. Very, very cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this guy out by following each of these curved markings, or flaps is what I call them. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife, but you could use a pair of scissors. So I'm going to take my uh, uh, self-healing board here and use my X-Acto, and then go around and cut out each of these circles. You can see here like this. So I'm going to speed this part up a little bit. Now I want to point out that the accuracy of these pedals doesn't really matter. The only part that really matters is where the corners of the squares are. Try to be as close as you can and as accurate as you can to meeting the, each corner uh, so that it'll all line up properly when you fold it all together. But the exact precision of each flat doesn't matter. Like for example, I can I can kind of go all sorts of crazy out like this and it really won't matter because all those flaps are going to be inside and not visible from the outside. 
So don't don't panic if you're not being totally accurate with these circular-ish flaps. So that's the shape we now have. Now this is where I love my aluminum triangles because this really comes in handy for when it comes to folding these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and fold each one of the flaps now, one at a time, starting with this top one. And how, how I'll do this is I'll put my finger underneath the flap and then bring my ruler up to it and then press into the table with my fingers here and then fold this guy over my ruler like so. And then make sure I crease that really good, get that to fold flat. And then I'll take my ruler and even run across it like so to really give a nice defined corner and edge to each ind individual flap and each line that we're going to end up folding around this whole pattern. So here we go. Let's just knock this out. So those are all the flaps folded inward. It creates this cross pattern. So now we're gonna fold this line, these four lines, and that'll be it. Okay. Now that we have all of our creases ready to go, so now I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and I'm gonna glue these two flaps to go to one another. And I'll just put a little bit of glue on there. I'm not gonna use a whole lot, it doesn't take that much. I'm gonna, as accurate as possible, maintain those edges to one another and then let that glue cool down. Just like that. And we're gonna do that on all these flaps. So we're gonna make these two meet now. And then this last flap here I'm going to do all at one time. And there you have it, the cube, the first shape of the platonic solids which represents the earth just like that in a nice elegant paper model form. Uh, it is one of five. Like I said, we're going to be tackling all five platonic solids in this video series. So the cube represents the earth. The next one we will be tackling is the tetrahedron, which represents fire, which is this four-sided uh, triangle with uh, equilateral triangles on all sides, just like that. The one we're going to be making is going to be a bit larger than this one. So stay tuned for that video, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Later.